Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the... Wait, what are you doing on set? Get back to your desk! Back to your desk! Sorry about that. Okay, hi. Jack and Matt here with the Toaster Bros, and today we're going to be doing the 2020 $500 gaming PC. And Micro Center was nice enough to make it happen. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, Micro Center. All right, guys, special thanks again to Micro Center. They helped out with this PC build. They basically paid for the whole thing, so big props to them. We wanted to do a $500 PC going into 2020 because we believe $500 is a great price point. And if you're looking to save a lot of money and you have access to a Micro Center near you, definitely go into one of their stores. They are a really awesome place, especially if you're a tech enthusiast and you haven't been to a Micro Center yet. Definitely add that to your bucket list to go check out, but you could really do a lot of stuff at Micro Center and save a lot of money and build awesome PCs at a lot of different price points. So special thanks again to Micro Center and uh, let's talk more about this PC. All right guys, so for the processor, we have an AMD Ryzen 5 2600. This is a six core, 12 threaded processor that honestly the price that you get these for right now, you cannot beat. So we really highly recommend this processor. And then to pair with that processor, we have a Gigabyte B450M DS3H. So this is a micro ATX board that's pretty small because we're putting it in a smaller case, but we do want to point out that if you buy certain processors and motherboards together, you get a really nice combo discount. So keep that in mind when shopping at Micro Center. And for those of you guys who don't actually have Micro Center, don't forget they, they do actually have shipping options and also you could just use Amazon. So I mean, we're gonna have links for both down below. So for RAM, we have two eight gig sticks of HyperX Fury. This is DDR4 at 3200 megahertz and this is a total of 16 gigs. So honestly, with RAM being so cheap right now, it really doesn't even make sense for a $500 build to go with anything less than 16. So we really do highly recommend kits like this where they're under $100. All right, guys, and as for the graphics card, we're testing something a little bit new here. This is the 1650 Super. Now, before you comment down below, why are you using a 1650? Well, the 1650 Super is a way better card. It actually competes with the RX 580, and the only downside of this card is it does require an external power adapter, so it actually makes a lot more sense for new PC builds as opposed to the 1650 that you would normally get um, before this one release. So this is a very competitive card at its price point of around $170. If you're buying a new graphics card, you can definitely consider this and I highly expect this thing to max out pretty much any game you want to play at 1080p and get very good results. And also it's Nvidia so you get the Nvidia feature set like NVENC and all that sort of stuff. As for storage, of course, you know we like to go with M.2 SSDs, and this is an inland SSD, which is an in-house brand of Micro Center, but there are a lot of different options you can go with if you're shopping on Amazon. This is a 256 gig NVMe SSD, NVMe speeds, and also the fact that it's really not much more expensive than a standard M.2 drive, so we really wanted to opt for that extra fast speed, and you could always add a hard drive to this build in the future if you wanna add more storage, or maybe even another SSD. The sky's the limit. Now here is another product that is an in-house Micro Center brand. This is their PowerSpec 550 watt power supply. It is 80 plus bronze, and we actually used it in the PC that we gave away when we went to Micro Center, which if you haven't seen that video, a lot of you haven't seen that video, hit the eye in the top right corner to check that video out. But this power supply is a really good value. While it doesn't have the cleanest cables when building a PC, we're doing a $500 budget PC. There's gonna be some compromises here somewhere. We figured 550 watts is enough for upgradability in the future to upgrade to like a 3600 and a better graphics card while also delivering enough performance now for the components that we have. And now for the case, we are using the Cooler Master Q300L, which is a really awesome case that we use multiple times in PC builds. It's been a little while though since we've actually used it. Um, we really like this case because one, it has some nice ventilation, and two, it's a small four-factor case. You can move it around with you wherever you go, and we are all about making really cool builds here, and Cooler Master is an awesome company. So um, that pretty much wraps up all the parts here for this PC build. How about we go ahead and slap this thing together and see how it performs in 2020 style, but it's still 2019 for a few more hours.
right guys, now that we are ready to test this $500 gaming PC, we're going to be starting this off with Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now we are running on 1080p high settings right now. I'm going to crank this FOV up a little bit because it's probably not fun to play on a lower FOV. Uh, but overall, the uh, graphic settings are on high. You can go through and see all the settings right here. Um, and we're just going to kind of take a look at the performance and see how this thing performs. All right, guys, now that we're in a game of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, really, it's very impressive in terms of the results right now. Uh, we are getting, oh, get a kill, uh, well over 100 FPS, which is ideal. You can definitely play this on high refresh rate if you really wanted to. Um, yeah, Call of Duty normally is a little bit more demanding. It looks like the GPU is close to being pinged at 100%, so this 2600, which we know could handle a better graphics card if you wanted to go that route, and that is a teammate, hello. Um, but really, I'm pretty impressed with how this thing's performing. No! But looking at the usage above, it looks like this game is actually using about 9 gigs of RAM, so it's really starting to look like 16 gigs of RAM is becoming the main standard that you're going to want to go with if you want a modern gaming PC, even at 1080p. So um, definitely consider that when uh, building this system. You could go with 8 gigs, but you might lose some uh, significant performance because of it. I'm going to play until I die. Here we go. See that guy right there? I know. Not this time. Oh! But anyways, guys, uh, performance is pretty impressive. Well over 100 FPS in a game like Call of Duty. And I just got sliding the head again. I'm gonna call it here. Let's go ahead and try another game real quick. All right, guys, you know a benchmark would not be complete without CSGO, of course, on Dust 2. We're doing very high settings, everything maxed out right now, 1080p, uh, full screen. So let's go ahead and get in a match and see how it does. All right, guys, so yeah, we're getting a astounding uh, like 200-ish FPS with lots of mic noise. Like, kind of like forgotten how to play, if I'm being honest. It's weird. Point and shoot. There you go. Nice and quiet. Yeah, it looks like it's performing really well. That 2600 is actually boosting up to 3.8 gigahertz, which is pretty impressive for a second gen part to um, boost up like that, especially with the stock cooler. So um, and we're not getting that hot with it too. 58 degrees Celsius isn't too bad running on the stock cooler. Same thing for the yeah. 1650 Super. Oh man. Dude, how am I missing oh, these shots? There we go. I don't know about you, but I feel like I'm hitting these, fam, and they're just not... <laughs> Content. Oh, you got this. There you go. Use your really? health How shot. How do I use it? X. Oh, okay. X. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. All right, one more kill. One All more right. kill. This is it. Of course, it's no surprise CSGO runs perfectly fine on this setup. Um, does it, does it make the game any better than it is? I don't know. Does it make people not spam talk in the chat? Nope. Yes, during your 2020. No. No. You got this. Here we go. I haven't actually slept since 2019. Aw. No. Damn it. Oh, there you go. Okay. That counts. <laughs> there you go. CSGO, more than playable. Let's go move on I to the next wait. game. All right, kids, it's your favorite game, Fortnite. What we're gonna do is run this on pro settings, which people might be wondering, what is that? That is epic view distance, pretty much everything else on off or low because no one really runs it on max settings unless, well, if you want to, go for it. Uh, but here is the Fortnite settings, element FPS 1080p. We're gonna hit apply, and then we're gonna dive into a team rumble match and see what kind of performance we can get. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Fortnite Christmas edition, but it's January 2nd, so I don't know what the heck's going on here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and drop in and see what kind of performance numbers we are getting. Uh, right now, we're at well over 200 FPS on pro settings, which is more than ideal for a setup like this. Um, it's actually great for 1080p 144 hertz. It's not gonna be great for high refresh rate because second gen Ryzen normally has some issues with IPC and just getting above that 200 mark. But you know, if you really wanna play um, and get even higher frames, you could invest in something like a 3600, um, but there's a lot of upgradability you can do with this PC. Uh, but right now it's uh, pretty dang good. All right, as we land and start to loot around, we're like well over 250-ish FPS, which is actually really impressive. Um, one thing to mention that we do always mention is that you should definitely make sure you're getting the fast memory and enabling the XMP profile on the fast memory when you get this uh, PC bu built and put together, same thing, um, because it's gonna really impact your performance because Ryzen really, really likes fast memory, and if you don't do that, you will probably lose some performance. So these high uh, frame rates are to do with uh, good RAM selection and also, um, yeah, just that RAMage, you know? 
Lasered. Lasered. Oh. Oh, he has a lightsaber, dude. Oh, God. Facing the Sith Lord over there. <laughs> Look at him go. Is he coming at you? He wants to. He's going to stand there and let me shoot him. Hey, buddy. Oh, no. <laughs> I played with them too much. They had to come at me. All MC right. lightsaber got you. Ah. No! I gave it my best shot. But yeah, guys, Fortnite, definitely more than playable. Well over 200 FPS. You know, you Fortnite pros out there, you got yourself a gaming PC. Let's go uh, test a couple of our built-in benchmarks and then we'll wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, we're gonna be running the built-in benchmark for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is kind of an example of a AAA title, most demanding uh, kind of setup that you would run on a PC like this. Um, we are gonna be using the built-in benchmark on high settings just to kind of get a real world example of what the 6050 Super is capable of doing. And then also, well, just see how the system overall handles a game like this. So let's run the built-in benchmark and see what kind of numbers we can get. Alright guys, so as you can tell, Shadow of the Tomb Raider performed really well with an average FPS of 85, which is what you can expect from a $500 gaming PC uh, in 2020. So how about we go ahead and uh, conclude this video and explain exactly what we saw, what we'd recommend if we wanted to change things, and uh, just wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, you guys just saw some really nice benchmarking, and for $500, this thing did not disappoint at all. And that $500 price is using Amazon, so keep that in mind. You can actually get this for under $500 if you do use today's video sponsor, Micro Center, to put together this system. So we will leave multiple parts links down below. Both of them will help us out. If you do buy the Amazon links, they are affiliate links. If you do buy on Micro Center, they are tracked just to show that, you know, we add some value to Micro Center. But this build overall is a really awesome value. The 2600 is a great processor. You can upgrade it to a 3600 or further if you want to. Um, and we're actually really impressed overall with the performance, especially that 1650 Super. It's become a really good option for us, especially when we normally go with like a used 580. So for those of you guys who didn't know, we actually live streamed this whole entire build. Like we, we built it live for the viewers um, and you're seeing it on YouTube later on. So uh, yeah, if you guys want to check that out, you know, with the little uh, lower third down below. And also we kind of are thinking about doing future live stream builds. Let us know in the comment down below um, if you would like us to live stream some builds here and there. It's been an awesome way for us to add extra content for you guys. And the people who came to the stream were able to see a basically bird's eye view of how we make a Toast Bros video. So let us know in the comment section down below and hit that follow button. We hope to see you all over there. So we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Peace out. Goodbye.